Hello, hello, Mario. How are we doing? Um, Tom Grant here. Um, usually you would be staring at uh, Damien's lovely face, but he is in uh, in Portugal in Estoril with uh, with John covering that event, which I'm sure we will have a chat about at some point. But first of all, Mario, how are you doing, mate? Uh, have you had a good Easter weekend? Yes, <laughs> I have to say yes. It's it's been all fine and. Um, you know, it, it's actually been a couple of tough weeks um, before Easter, but it's been also a very nice weekend. So yeah, <laughs> it's been it's been fine. Yeah, and did you did you do much? Do you, I take it you guys like you know over there in, in, in Italy, you guys have like Friday and Monday off. It's bank holidays over here. I don't know if it works the same where you are. Yeah, more more or less it's the same because um you know uh, as for this weekend here it's still holiday yeah uh, you know the, the the monday right after uh and so basically you know uh yeah friday saturday we most of us have you know some some free time to um yeah basically it's four or five days you know where most of most people really don't really do a, a lot here here but of course there are st some activities that are still going on even during you know the, the the days of holiday yes and of course today is april the first um april fool's day have you been taken in by anything on social media that you at one point thought wow that's happening and then uh discovered you were the the bottom of an April Fool's joke is that uh, have you been taken in by anything? Uh, I think only one, but not on social media because on social media I'm usually you know ready to uh, you know during this you day to uh, to to read anything with a little bit of you know. Um, was it tennis related? <laughs> the one that you that you read? Yeah, yeah, week? yeah. It was tennis related, but oh my god, I I don't even remember what uh, was it because there have been some, some things that you know it, they they are impossible, like you know Federer coaching Djokovic or something like that. You know, it's no way. Uh, but I think ah yes, and I I feel so dumb for that. Uh, I had uh, I read a post on Instagram. Um, the Geneva Open, uh, the ATP 250, uh, talking about the the clay, day clay turning pink for this year, and for one moment I was like, maybe what? it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> then I I remembered. By the way, hi, uh, you know, hi all the people here in the chat. Hi, Ghost, especially our boy. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's been getting a bit of success lately. <laughs> yeah, but... um, we we I mean we can come on to Tommy Paul and uh, and how he's getting on in the the aesthetics department. Um, Ghost <laughs> is uh, telling us that he's officially the hottest dude on tour. Jake, how are we doing? Um, Swarna, I believe, was in. Well, actually, I think that was a long time ago. Um, it says that she he was a, a new member. So, um, remember, it's underneath the screen. Hit the like button on this episode and subscribe to the channels through the social media um, and don't miss any of the shows that we can put out there almost on a daily basis these days, um, such as the pool of talent we have at Talking Tennis. Um, so I suppose there's only one place to start um, and your boy Yannick Sinner, you know, um, you know, absolutely destroying the tour this year, only had one defeat. Um, I'll come to some of the statage in terms of his, uh, his final performance against Grigor Dimitrov. But yeah, I mean, moves up to world number two, Mario. Were you out on the streets celebrating on your Easter Sunday that Yannick Sinner managed to win the Wyoming Open at the third time of asking? How how did it go? Oh my God, here, uh, it's it's definitely a bit, a bit weird because, um, you know, here in Italy, there's a lot of talk. And, you know, now there are people talking about holding the Italian flag at the Olympic Games and stuff like that. Um, but it, it hasn't actually been as big of a deal as, you know, other things happen lately. Uh, I really had this thought today. I mean, also, I have to say that today in Italy, newspapers are not out. Uh, so there hasn't been, you know, some things on paper also to read, okay. and uh, I because you know during the Easter day, 
the, the paper no, stopped. They, and... they, they don't write, yeah, so uh, nothing came out. Uh, but I have to say that I was really uh, saying myself, oh my God, this is a 1,000 title, and uh, it doesn't even feel anymore as, as, as big of a deal for, yeah. for all that happened, you know. Uh, it was more about uh, how well he, he played in the, the, later, the last two rounds, the semifinal and the final, and, you know, of course, about the new best ranking and, and all this. This kind of run actually happened even three or four months ago. Reaction would have been so different. And yeah. right now it's, you know, it's it's for sure. But people are used to it. People are, I suppose people are now yeah, you know, accustomed people are, to it. are kind of used to, <laughs> to all this success yeah. lately. And, and it's incredible for sure because we know how big of a player to win 1,000 events. And especially to have, and yeah, he is actually the, the the player of the moment, no doubt, because of. Oh, Ma Mario is talking about the player of the moment. I, that's all I heard. And is he talking about Nuno Borges, Luca Pui? I mean, who could it be? I, I'm just I, saying. I, I, I think. <laughs> How's how's going in? Ah, no, he's going away. No, he's I'm, going. Here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. No, it's going great, it's going great. But we aren't really here to talk about Estoril, and we're not here for me to interrupt. But yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. saying, I'm, I'm just saying hello, and I might be able to produce. Um, anyway, but you have a good time. Okay. Lovely. Ooh, one, so, more, one, more, okay. one more thing. One more thing. Cheers. I knew he was going to pull out the drinks. He's going to pull out the drinks always. Um, yeah. So, so I am. Yeah. I'm cameo definitely. appearance from. I, from Sean. But, but yeah, sorry, you were saying he's put you off your stride there, Mario. Um, you were talking about uh, the fact that Sinar has, you know, won these three events so far at the start of 2024, including a Grand Slam um, and, uh, you know, now taking his second uh, ATP Masters 1000 title at the third time of asking in Miami. Um, and you, you're basically, you were, I think, saying that people are now just getting used to the fact that this guy is... Um, you know the 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 real deal, really. Um, it's not just a flash in the pan. This guy's going to be up there at the top of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, you know, it also feels sustainable the the way he's doing it, the way he's he's playing. Um, if we think about yesterday's match, uh, I mean, at, at, it really feels like the me had really at the end no clue about what he needed to do i i wrote also this on on twitter because uh we saw some points from from the low camera and it was really great to see because um it was easier to understand how um, risky uh, dimitrov was forced to play if he wanted to really uh, put any capture on on sinner because sinner um despite not really you know playing some attacking tennis out of nowhere, still really well balled, but he was able to really move the ball in, in an incredible way. And this has really made the difference. And I have to be honest, most people have talked about the serve, and rightfully so, because it is a shot in, incredibly improved, the physicality, and that's also right. But I was also uh, watching the stats and we have, um, we see a lot about how, you know, the, the speed of the forehand, the back and the average speed. And Sinner actually has also slowered the little bit. If we talk about four or five miles per hour, he, his shot was in out, um, kind of one of the two, three guys who had the, the highest uh, speed average in terms of his baseline shots. Um, and right now, you know, he still is able to produce this kind of, special winners and all this stuff but he's playing more sustainable and he really seems like having a very clear idea about what he has to do and what he needs to to, to achieve on the court in that moment in order to to put the opponent in some difficult situations yeah i mean absolutely i mean um yeah i mean there was that one moment at the start of the match i think the you didn't realise it at the, at the time, but, you know, Dimitrov had his only 
break point, I think at 2-1. And, um, yeah. you know, you again, you, you weren't aware at the time that this was the only chance that the, the Bulgarian who'd been playing so well put out Alcaraz and put out Zverev. Um, and as soon as he didn't take that, um, you know, it was only a matter of moments before Sinner was on top. And then, you know, there was only going to be one winner after that, the second set. Um, like you say, I think Dimitrov ran out of ideas. And I mean, I, 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 mean, I was looking up some of the, the statage off the final um, beforehand. Um, and basically, Sinner um, didn't have any backhand ground stroke unforced errors, zero. OK, um, and what it, what it said in the 72 minute final, um, he had 57 back uh, backhand ground strokes, excluding volleys and only missed two. But those were um, at the dead uh, at the, on the dead run and came off the end of his racket. Everything else for the 72 minute final found the court. Um, so it, it just kind of illustrates, you know, just like you say, how dominant this guy can be uh, off the ground, uh, the power that he's got. And his opponents are finding it difficult to, you know, find a way to, to you know, combat that that aggression. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Do, do you put him up there as one of the favourites now for, you know, the clay court seasons coming up? Um, the, the French coming up now, he looks like he's got the, the, the game that he can play on different surfaces. All right. He's been to, I think, Wimbledon semi before. Um, so, yeah, I mean, where do you rank him now? I mean, number two in the world, many tipping him now to be, a year end number one potentially, um, yeah. Is the sky the limit for this guy? Is he is he overtaking Alcaraz in terms of the hype? Um, where where would you put him at the moment, Mario? I mean, uh, for sure. Uh, you know, hard courts are really you know he's mm, the, the best surface for him where he really uh, you know feels comfortable playing. So probably you know to imagine a round on a round of. I don't know, 22-1 also on clay, it's maybe not really possible, but still I think he is up there and he he can compete with, uh, you know, uh, will be interesting for sure because I, I still think that he won't be maybe as comfortable as he has been on, on the hard court, but his qualities are really, you know, important. I would say too important to not imagine himself being up there uh, you know in in contention for for the biggest titles maybe she he won won't get one but i think that he there's no reason in my opinion to think that he won't be up there uh, you know fighting for for this title and reaching you know some some later rounds in some, some of these big tournaments maybe not in all of them but I I would still believe that he he will will at least improve his results considering you know last year's clay clay season. So I'm expecting him to to get better than than what he did last year. Maybe um, talking about clay, you know, um, a guy like Alcaraz still has you know plays on here more naturally. But I still believe that Sinner has will will have his chances on on that surface. Yeah, absolutely. Let me ask you, um, Mario. I mean, I know that. I mean, of course, you've got to think back to, to little moments and and uh, and tournaments and events. And you know, it was a set down to Greek sport at one point. I mean, I know that was in the Sunday night, and people were. I was on the stream at the time, and we were saying, "Oh, you know, Sinner looks in a bit of trouble." But you know, once he overcame that, he dominated the third uh, deciding set. Um, and didn't look back. Um, and I wanted to ask you what performance. I don't know if you watched the Medvedev semi final. Um, and I just wondered, you know, what performance was was you know stronger. Um, and it's very, it's kind of, I suppose, picking apples and oranges. But you know, both very, very dominant. Both at the loss, but one at the loss of three games, one at the loss of four. Um, you know, he's just streaks ahead of most players on the tour at the moment. Um, I still believe that the final, in my opinion, has been uh, his best performance of, okay. of this fortnight. For me, he played even better than, than what he did in the semi-final, where for me, mm, of course, he played very, very good, amazing performance against Medvedev, mm, which is maybe even more dangerous, you know, if we think about Sinner medvedev match compare maybe to Sinner Dimitrov but in my in my opinion Dimitrov has done um, you know 
a bit better what he needed to do compared to, to Medvedev in the semifinal. And I think that Sinner really, um, at some point between you know the end of the first set and the beginning of the second, uh, has really expressed, uh, in my opinion, the, the best level he, he has expressed in, in this fortnight. He came to, to Miami with some, you know, a bit of issues because he handed the semifinal at Indian Wells with some, you know, um, wrist pain because he fell and maybe he wasn't, you know, he was maybe even playing a bit more carefully. He wasn't feeling great right from the start. But yeah, uh, as soon as uh, he came... Yeah, he came out of these troubles, these early troubles. Then he's been almost, almost unplayable, yes. I have to say, you know, uh, the quarter against Machak, in my opinion, and the final against Dimitrov, uh, I'm taking these two players because uh, they are two, you know, players devoted to an attacking tennis style. Uh, really has been imp- impressive for me because it's shown, uh, you know, how not sustainable was also that tactic against Sinner in the form he was. They really needed to go too big. Uh, they, yeah, I saw so for me, I would say these two matches, and not because I'm disrespecting Medvedev, but uh, because for me, this contrast, you know, the way he played against these two guys who have this attacking tennis style, um, it really felt um, good, good for me to, to analyze a lot of things. Yeah, and let's talk about um, Dimitrov. I mean, Sinner, undoubtedly the um, the story of the week, and, and you know just his, his performance, and, and like you say, maybe three of the the matches he played, just uh, utterly, utterly dominant. But um, I want to talk about Dimitrov. You know, a big story, getting to a Masters one thousand final, um, second time uh, in a while. He's now in the top ten again, um, bringing back the the single handed backhand into the top ten. You know, put out of course Alcaraz. Um, beats Verev um, for the first time in almost a decade. Seven went down on that one. Um, kept me up until 2 a.m. on uh, Saturday morning. Um, but yeah, can you go into his week? Um, you know, where does he go? You know, in fact, he's 32 years old now. He, he's doing it for the love of the game, but he's, he's playing in some of the form of his life. Um, and, you know, he'll be pleased despite that that kind of defeat where he couldn't figure out how to beat Sinner because not many players can right now. Yeah, I think that uh, the loss, yeah, maybe the scoreline has been, you know, bad in the end, 6-3, 6-1. But in my opinion, it, it leaves, you know, not much <laughs> to, to what he did during the fortnight. I think that the judgment is extremely positive because right now a loss against Sinner... Yeah, I mean, you can maybe compete more closer than, you know, closer than a 6-3, 6-1 loss, but Sinner played actually very, very good also. So uh, beating, you know, three top tens in a row to get to a Masters final with those kind of performances, the one against Alcaraz has been unbelievable, but actually also impressive, you know, backing up against Zverev, another, you know, great player and playing another get match and winning these back-to-back matches against, um, you know, some of the top five players in in the world right now. Um, It has been very good. Dimitrov has been playing amazing since, you know, since um, the end of last season, actually the middle maybe of last season even. And he's, he's doing it consistently and, you know, um, very well deserved this, you know, him being back in, in the top 10. And I I think that if he keeps doing like this, you know, maybe you are ready sometimes. He, he has been a bit unlucky because he's, he's, you know, played two Masters finals and he faced, you know, Djokovic in Paris. I mean, Djokovic in Paris was not playing well, but was still the man of the moment because of what he was doing last year. And right now against Sinner, you know, it hasn't been the most lucky combination possible. Um, But, you know, if he keeps doing like that, maybe, you know, imagine him winning, I don't know, even a 500 title uh, somewhere this year, it's it's really possible, and I think you know he he it will be very well deserved for the way he's mm, carrying himself. Yeah, I mean, I uh, as I said, I was uh, I was commentating on the stream between him and Zverev, and I threw out this little stat um, regarding um, he becomes the third 
uh, player uh, in the rankings of longest gaps between top 10 stays in the ATP rankings history. So um, what that means, he actually left the top 10 in November 2018 um, and returns uh, you know, this week today. Um, so that means that he's ended a streak of 260 weeks since leaving the top 10 um, and he jumps into third place um, ahead of Gail Monfils, who had 252 weeks um, after returning to the top 10 in September 2016. Um, I don't know if you're even interested. Do you want to know who the top two are, Mario? I shouted this out on, on Friday night. Uh, do you know? Yes, I do. Yeah, um, it's Gio Simone. Um, he was 308 weeks between top 10 stays, um, 19th of October okay. 2009 to the 14th of September 2015. Um, and in second place is Albert Costa, 264 oh. weeks, and that's the 19th of May 97 to the 10th of June 2002. Um, and now we have Grigor in the third spot. So there you go. <laughs> um, uh, a little bit yeah, of this. Can't re- kind of leave the, the, the Miami stuff. Um, without talking about Alcaraz, um, you know, hadn't won a, an event since Wimbledon, won Indian Wells, uh, people talking ba- about him being back to his best, okay, Indian Wells, the um, the conditions favour his style of play a lot, um, and it was always going to be the, the real test as if he could do uh, the double, um, didn't even get that far to face center in the final, Dimitrov of course, beating him pretty comprehensively, I just wondered your take on Alcaraz, Will he be happy with his his four weeks, his March, um, or you know, will he be um, sitting there? He seems like a, you know a guy who doesn't let things get to him. And you know, I, I was about to ask, will he be um, you know disappointed he didn't he doesn't make it the double? But yeah, I'm, I'm sure he's got to be happy going into the clay court season about where he yeah. is at the moment. Yeah, I agree because you know we also have to uh, consider. A bit the whole process. He maybe um, came to this sanction double with some doubts in his head, even if you know, um, one in Indian Wells actually beating. You know, of course, he's been the only player to to beat Sinner this year so far, and getting a solid win against against Medvedev. And so, yeah, I would say that overall he can be he can be happy about this this March, mm, the way he played on the Sunshine Double. I would say that even Miami, yeah, maybe he left with some you know um, kind of a bad defeat, despite Dimitrov actually playing great in that match. And this has to be said. But even before that match, he was playing very well. So I would say that um, there there's been a big step, you know, forward considering, you know, what happened maybe in the first two months of the season, he was a little bit ups, ups and downs. And so, yeah, I would say that he can be quite satisfied. And yeah, now the, the clay comes. Um, maybe for the first heavy love, maybe for the first time he will really play Monte Carlo in quite good condition because last year he didn't play. 2022, you know, came after winning Miami and at that young age also, you know, it's not easy to get back-to-back big tournaments. And so, uh, you know, he, he ended up losing actually against Cora in the marathon match. I will be interesting to see him in Monte Carlo and actually the world places. And I still think that his game is very also natural on, on it. And so he will be, he should be fine. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the first thing that came to mind with me was... You know, it's not many times you win a Masters 1000 title and then a week later you drop down the rankings. Um, there can't be many times that's happened. Um, but it just shows you, you know, the quality that he is defending a lot of the time. You know, Indian Wells defending champion, so didn't really make any kind of ground there. Um, and then making the final in Miami the, uh, the previous year and not doing so because of the quarterfinal defeat to, to Dimitrov. Just shows you he, he set his own standards. Um, and when you do that, you have to make sure that you're you're consistent enough to keep them. Uh, yeah, it's there, also the, because the you know the player who was behind really fast. You know, it wasn't easy. Uh, even you know, winning a, despite winning a Masters title in Indian Wells, but it was you know a bit in the air. Let's say like this that Sinner would have at some point overcome him in the ranking for for some weeks. So. I wouldn't be, you know, so um, give that much of an importance. Uh, of course, you know, being a top two seeds in the biggest events is 
great, you know. But still, I would say that you shouldn't worry that much about that. Uh, so yeah, he he's world number three right now, but uh, doesn't really change that much in my opinion. So no, okay, maybe changes enough. more for Sinner because it's the best ranking, you know. So you have um, that step ahead in your also you know career high ranking number two. So it's a big deal for Sinner because he reaches kind of a new milestone. But for a guy like Alcaraz, as long as it's number three, four, you know, if you get to six, seven, eight, then yeah, it becomes more important because you start maybe drawing the best players earlier. But being the top four, five players in the world, it's it's fine. Yeah, uh, yeah. As soon as you start taking a tumble um, down those those rankings, it can it can actually you know momentum. It can snowball. Um, and you can find yourself. I mean, look at Cam Norrie. I was I was looking at it. Today. He's like thirty one or something in the in the rankings now after a you know uh, an indifferent, shall we say, um, eighteen months. Um, and you know, it's just like you say, it, it makes it harder to bounce back from that. Um, we, we're half an hour into this chat here, Mario, and we haven't really mentioned who obviously is the number one in the world. Uh, Novak Djokovic didn't play Miami after a an early defeat to Lucanardi in Indian Wales. Um, today, he begins um, his 419th week as world number one. Um, and he's actually broken Roger Federer's record as the oldest number one in the ATP rankings history today. Um, uh, uh, or is it next Sunday? I think he might do so. Um, when he'll be 36 years and 321 days old. But I wanted to touch on, obviously, the split with uh, Goran Ivanisevic. Um, did you see that one coming? Not not really, um, meaning that when I read the news, I was like, ah, I, I was not really, you know, expecting to read it. Uh, but then again, um, I actually feel it can be good for him to find some new motivations to change something um, because it's, it's really not easy at that age, almost 37, after a period when you win so much but you're also starting to get you know old actually for tennis i mean and so you have also other things in your mind and all these things but um, yeah in the end i have maybe a positive judgment about this um, this decision because i feel like it can be maybe good for him to get a bit out of a comfort zone and to try new things to um focusing more maybe on some other aspects and yeah just have new motivations to try to keep going and try to win something more before you know he decides to to call it a day in some some future you know um so yeah i i think my my judgment so far is quite good about that and yeah about not hiring a new coach probably uh, he said that and I would say that for someone like him, are we really in a position to really judge? Because I, I feel like he's mm, he's really shown a lot that he really knows himself, what he needs to do, what he wants, yeah. at least. So I will try to say, OK, uh, let's let's see. Let's see what happens. I, I don't want really to make a, a big judgment before because I feel like he he knows better than anyone else what to do, how to do, and, you know, w what's the best for, for himself at the moment. So I feel like we we will see. Absolutely. And I can see Ghost and, and John having a discussion about yeah. me in the comments chat. Um, but as they quite rightfully say, we have a public to entertain um, and uh, not there to... Yeah, I wanted to talk about Medvedev, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Have you got some stuff on Medvedev? I mean, uh, I really, I, I mean, I like Daniel. Um, I uh, I just don't know if his game now compared to a couple of years ago, they, they, even though it's, it's strange to say, but like with Sinner and, and Alcaraz, it, it feels like he's he's almost getting left behind. He's still making finals. Me and Damien talked about this on Friday night, you know, he's still making finals. And, and as he quite rightly said when he got put out, he said, listen, um, um, it's not like I'm I'm going down to, to like 250 and 500 levels where I probably win some events. He's like, I'm getting put out by the big players here. 
Um, I'm making finals. I'm making semi-finals. Um, so let's not kind of go overboard in terms of where he's at. But you know, we've got a clay court and a and a grass court season coming up. I know he's won Rome last year and he's proved all the doubters wrong. Um, but really, this is the kind of barren period for him, isn't it? Because you know, as a, a self-proclaimed hard court specialist, um, it, it, he's not going to go into his favourite part of the season. So I just wonder where Daniel Medvedev gets his motivation for the next few months until you know the hard court, the American hard court comes back. I mean, I think that there is a very, very big motivation because, in my opinion, the biggest reason why he hasn't won titles in this long stretch since Rome last year, um, he actually improved very much in terms of the consistency, his average level. You know, he now rarely loses to some, um, you know, players he shouldn't lose to and yeah. he's actually more able to play at a decent level even when he doesn't really like the conditions um, just thinking about how he improved his results in Indian Wells for example getting back to back finals playing well in Roman clay actually almost the world clay season barring French Open um, because he, he still had solid results between Monte Carlo Madrid with some good wins so um, Wimbledon actually got his biggest result at Wimbledon uh, in 2023 because he reached his first semi-final there. And but uh, the big motivation and the biggest reason actually why he's not winning, you know, these titles is because he he's not being able right now to to beat these guys he he has to face in these later rounds against the three guys. Um, you know, ahead of him in the rankings, if we talk about uh, Djokovic, Alcaraz and Sinner, he is on an eight-match losing streak. And, um, you know, this is actually pretty big if we consider that right now uh, that's the challenge for him because these guys are right now consistently, um, you know, at the top of the game fighting for best, you know, for the biggest titles, you know, for example, Sinner has been amazing in these months and the only tournament where he hasn't been in the final, Indian Wells, there's been Alcaraz to face, for example. And, um, you know, it's it's difficult to imagine that he he's not, um, he hasn't, you know, to beat these guys in order to win these big titles. So uh, his success will you know, success talking about the best tournaments, the slams, the biggest masters, you know, um, maybe he he needs to find some solutions to, 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 to start beating these guys some, a few times again, uh, because uh, the record is not really encouraging. Even against Sinner, it's not, it's not only losing the last five matches in a row, um, but actually, the, the where I think, in my opinion, is that um, he, Sinner is now beating him with just, you know, playing his game. He, he doesn't need anymore to really, you know, bring new big plans like the servant volley. He, you know, he was executing in the Beijing final or something like that. And so it's, you know, and he needs to do something with his serve. His serve is not good anymore to, to keep up with those guys. It's, it's <clears> actually <throat> a lot of ups and downs with the serves, a lot yeah. of break suffered. Um, I mean, that's a great point opinion. because I saw a stat somewhere. And I, I don't know where I, I saw it. I think it was on Twitter somewhere. Um, yeah, I know who published it. I, do you know I, what stat I, I'm going to say about the, about the break points faced? Yeah, um, and it was something like the whole of last year he faced an average of like four point nine or three point nine break points per match, and right now he's up to like seven point six, um, something like that. Is is that the stat you thought I was going to mention? I think yes, because that's that that usual uh, that user on Twitter, um, which name? John's is looking like for that user Oleg, if you know it. So he... Uh, who publishes a lot of stats about uh, Medvedev since, you know, they are they are kind of fun. And uh, so they publish a lot of stats. Uh, I think it's Oleg and he has, uh, or she has, I don't know, uh, Anna K forever, something like that. Um, <clears throat> maybe it's, it's you know, from, from them, but I may yeah. be wrong. 
but they yeah for example uh there i saw that in this 2024 uh he has held this serve uh you know 79 percent of the time which is actually low for a player who's winning that much so yeah. in some way it shows that his return game is great um you know he's winning a lot of points holding that ma- uh, you know breaking serve many times he's able to bounce back but when you face guys like Sinner and Alcaraz, for example, talking about Sinner, when Sinner has started beating a lot of time these top five players and the main rivals, when he's brought his serve to a higher level, because you're under pressure a lot of times and you need, um, you know, you need to, to to ask more from from that shot. And in my opinion, he's having, you know, too few. And also, I have to say that in my opinion. Um, he he needs to find a solution to um, b- to find a, a bigger balance, a best, a better balance between you know staying, um, you know his Team natural by, yeah. game, natural kind of. I don't want to say defensive, but something like that, uh, and attack but with more you know uh, thinking a, a bit better than how how to do it when to do it because for example against inner uh to try this more attacking game style but in my opinion there's not been you know uh, too too much order in his you know uh, execution uh, so I would say that he's running out of gas maybe a little bit um, against this uh, this player right now. Still, of course, you know, praising him for the consistency because his start of the season is still bit very, very good. He's number two in the race, you know. Uh, there we yeah, go. He's one. found it. There we go. So, yeah, I mean, that just highlights exactly what you're saying in terms of Medvedev's serve. Um, uh, I can't, I'm always trying to remember where I heard it because I was in the car when I was listening to it and he was talking about uh, he serve, um, and I thought it was it was pre US Open and talking about he's no confidence in his serve. It's fifty fifty whether or not he'll be able to you know get on the court and serve any, uh, uh, with any kind of real strength. Um, so I think you're right. I think he needs to go away and work on that. Um, he needs a lot more free points. Um, you know these guys are particularly Sinner are getting a lot of free points on the serve, um, which just makes the overall match a lot easier. Um, I'll tell you, I just, I'll just read out the quote that he, he mentioned after the Sinner defeat in the semi-finals. He said, I'm trying to play the best tournaments in the world. I think if we look tournament by tournament, I'm losing against big players. I have been in some finals and I lost against Sinner, Djokovic, Alcaraz. And for sure, I want to beat them and, and let's say be better than them. But I didn't manage to do it and I have to work on either mentally or tennis-wise. For example, on clay, I'm going to go to play Monte Carlo, Roman Madrid and Roland Garros. It might uh, it might be tough for a t- uh, to get a title there, but I would play 10 uh, ATP 250s a year. I'd probably get some titles. Never be too confident, but I'm sure I'd be able to. But I'm trying to play the best tournaments in the world. So clearly his point is, you know, he's not he's not worrying. He's competing against the best there is. Um, you know, he could go down and, and, you know, maybe win some events, but he wouldn't be feeling confident in his own game. So he's going to stick with it. Um, even though, like I say, he's got this clay court run coming up. Um, yeah, but I mean, I I, mm, I think his analysis is very good because it's also, I mean, humanly impossible to play a lot of small tournaments if you are playing that many matches because you are consistently getting to semis, to final uh, in in the big tournament. So then, mm, you know, he, he played uh, in Miami until the semis. He will play in Monte Carlo in 10 days time. And then there's, there's Madrid, Rome. Um, it's it's difficult to imagine him playing, you know, uh, small tournaments, given that he's having mm, a very good success in terms of, you know, consistency and numbers of matches played and won. Um, the the thing is that he needs to sort out a little bit how to um, improve, um, you know, change some things up in order to be able to, um, you know, to beat the guys who are actually stopping him uh, to 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 still winning, you know, b- big trophies. Um, and and that's that's it in my opinion. Also, I have to say that if we compare him to, uh, for example, Alcaraz and Sinner, he has a, a bit more matchup issues in my opinion. For example, Dubai uh, against Umber, 
Uh, Humbert is a player who makes him feeling a lot of un uncomfortable, and he has a few player, uh, a few players against whom you know he finds himself in an uncomfortable position. And maybe Sinner and Alcaraz are a bit more, you know, uh, safe from from this point of view. But in my opinion, the most important thing is to find a way to get a few wins against Alcaraz, Sinner, and you know maybe Djokovic if. He will be, you know, back at the best. Um, because it's mostly there where, you know, he is stopping himself in his, you know, runs towards the, the biggest titles. Absolutely. Um, we'll move on to, I mean, John there has uh, has put up a, I don't know if that's Give me your answer. On what? If, will he win another slam? On the poll. Oh, I would say no, he wouldn't. I don't think he would be. I think. Uh, I think. Um... I'm really, you know, I struggle because there are some things, you know. For example, at times I think like if he keeps getting there, maybe there will be one good chance, you know. But in the end, I also, you know, uh, struggle at time. Oh yes, it's the 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 t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, let, yes. let me let me say this about me today. Do you never get the so feeling maybe sometimes? Maybe I say no. Well, Maybe, yeah. do you ever get the feeling with Medvedev sometimes when he's at these big tournaments? Listen, this guy is a, a is a top top player, all right. Clearly, one of the top four or five. But sometimes I can't figure out how he's managed to get his like because I can't figure out that there's nothing that sits with the, his game style that I go, wow, this guy's like you know, um, like it, it's not like entertaining, like get out your seat kind of style. It's like you know, it's not swashbuckling is probably the word that I'm trying to to, to find. Um, it's more like you know he, he just he grinds it out. He's you know the octopus. He, he's always getting the balls back. He he's patient. Um, he waits for his opponents to make mistakes. But if these guys basically work in that and just say we're not going to make mistakes, I often see him in the latter stages of like Miami and in the latter stages of Indy Wells. And I go to myself, how is he beating like these players? Because like these players on paper, like well not on paper actually. When I watch them against other players, I think they've got too much power for Medvedev. They'll, they'll just knock him about the court, but he somehow gets there every time. Um, and I just think he's—I just think people are working him out and, and they're figuring out how to play him now. Uh, well, I, I would say that I don't know if I agree this time. Uh, That's I okay. Agree. We're, all, we're allowed know, to disagree. I, uh, if we speak, you know, um, these players, if we talk about, for example, someone like Sinner, then yes. I would say yes, uh, but in general, I mean, it's very difficult to face Medvedev. I'm more surprised, actually, when a very attacking, you know, players with a very good attacking game style reaches the top, because mm, you, I know that it's more maybe entertaining to watch. Maybe your eyes are more like, wow, but I have this feeling that right now it's... Mm, it's diff it's very difficult to sustain that kind of uh, of game throughout you know world tournament and uh, to back to back tournaments. Even Alcaraz, I know that he has this entertaining game style, but it's um, it's still very well you know um, balanced in my opinion to when he needs to to stay a bit behind and when he can express himself uh, a bit better. He still can improve these things but you know i feel like um you know medvedev actually got a place into the best players in the world thanks to this um, very very solid and um yes um, solid game style in my opinion uh, and so i think that it can be true what you say it's true in my opinion for the top players but if we talk about atp players in general I wouldn't really say so. He hasn't taken that many <clears throat> early losses, for example. Uh, it's it's not really easy, um, especially when there are some young players. They haven't that much of experience. Um, he, he, it's not easy. If you watch him also live on, you know, in person, maybe you understand even better than from TV why it's a bit, you know, 
uh, you can feel a bit um, underwhelmed when you are facing him because he actually gives you uh, these balls and it's not that easy to to really attack them that much. Um, even the serve and volley, you know, uh, you think like, do a lot of serve and volley against Medvedev because he's so back. Uh, he's, t- you know, he's far away from the baseline. There's so much time to do it. But then again, we 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 understood that it's not very easy to do because if it if if it was that easy, a lot of player was you know would have do it every time yeah. you know and getting so so much success. So I would say that he's in in a period uh, where he's also matured because he's able to play better even where he doesn't like to do it. Um, but he's. He started struggling against these, you know, uh, great guys like Sinner and Alcaraz. And here, I, he, about these two, I agree with you. He needs to, I don't know if, if he will, if he's able to do it, but he, he needs to, um, to do something else because what he brings on the court right now is um, maybe not, uh, you know, not that much. For example, at the US Open in the semi against Alcaraz, he served amazing. Yeah, was one of the best service performances from you know yeah. from him in in the recent you know months, and maybe you know for example the serve can be a, a good key. I don't know. He needs to find something else, in my opinion. Okay, well we'll watch the space, and obviously coming up to the clay court season now, um, with points to defend, particularly in Rome. Um, I was only going to touch on in terms of the Miami stuff. Um, unless there was anything else you wanted to bring up, but just wanted to ask you about um, Fabian Marishan. Okay, a decent run, mm. some decent players beat the manure. Um, so a decent run into uh, until Zverev putting into that, I believe. Um, and I just thought, you know, he famously many people will know the name because of the the famous Alcaraz win of last year. Um, and I just wondered, you know, this is a a guy who's got a, a cracking game. He's a great tennis player. Um, he'll probably be there and thereabouts for you know the next five or six, seven years. Um, and just yeah, just tell for anybody maybe watching or listening who doesn't know too much about Marishan, um, what what's going right for him right now? Uh, first of all, I would say maybe the most basic <laughs> answer possible to the question is that first of all he has great you know, great um, baseline shots, backhand and forehand is able to strike them really well. And it's very basic, but it's it's true, actually. You know, that's the first thing. And then, you know, he's also, he has also good attitude, in my opinion. Uh, for example, if we talk about uh, the, the match against Eminor, really able out of nowhere to forget the six love set he lost in the second set. Uh, not bringing, you know, the bad momentum too much into into his head, and then again, great quality and great hands. Also, he he is a great ball striker, but he can, you know, change the rhythm very well uh, throughout the rally. And uh, you know, the mix of these things make him a, a very very, you know, dangerous player. Actually, in my opinion, almost an every condition so yeah i would say that he has what it takes to also take take maybe even you know a step forward yeah we can be i mean the boy loves a a drop shot so uh, i'm sure he'll be uh, playing plenty of those um over the next event um and i i, I, I would like to him. ask you about the biggest disappointment who this who disappointed you uh, in this uh, miami tournament uh, who disappointed me? That's a good question. I mean, Alcar- I mean, I'm somebody who's got a soft spot for Alcaraz. I was hoping he was going to to do the double. Um, so you know, when I woke up in the in the morning to find that he'd been beaten by Dimitrov, so I would say I was disappointed. That I was shocked. Um, I didn't see it coming um, because I thought you know this guy's back to his best. Um, so yeah, I was disappointed in that result. Um, where else would I go? You know, I mean, I would say. In terms of from a British perspective, Dan Evans in that match point. Okay. Um, and you know he, he had match point. Um, he he had that forehand that he he hit to the Christopher Eubanks forehand. Um, the guy guessed right and got yeah. out of a tricky situation. So in terms of an actual, you know, um, and I know Evans hasn't been in the best of forms. There wasn't exactly high expectations for him to 
to go doubles, uh, sorry, doubles, uh, to go like, you know, quarter final or semi final. But, you know, just pick up a bit of momentum. And he had the match in his hands. He should have done it, should have played to, to the Christopher Eubanks backhand. Um, and uh, we might have seen him into the next into the next round. So, I mean, I thought, for me, I thought Indian Wells, uh, I preferred the Indian Wells event. Um, I don't know about you, um, but I, I suppose with being Italian and having Sarah win it, I suppose Miami was your, was your favourite of the two. Mm, no, I have to say, uh, for me, it's different. You know, when I talk about the, the event I enjoyed, I focus more on other things because I, you know, I also try to stay maybe... Of course, objective about you know which tournament I found most interesting from different perspective. Yeah, probably Indian Wells was a bit better. Mm. Yeah, Miami has been uh, has had that good the good Dimitrov story, of course. Mm, but yeah, probably Indian Wells has been a bit better. Yeah. Just um, um, overall, I have to say that maybe if I have to to give you a couple of names, I would say Rublev and Fritz. Yeah, um, yep. especially you know the way um, those things came, and maybe especially Rublev, given that you know he also had um, you know didn't do very well at Indian Wells, also. Um, you know, yeah, it's it not been the greatest to lose early, but in my opinion, the way you do it, it's important to when I have to, you know, to give a judgment. And for me, this too has been big disappointment. So I would say Rublev because it's been kind of back to back big tournaments where he's yeah. had these rough losses, and Fritz because I thought like in Miami he could have done, he should have done better than than this, you know. And I mean, I think on the Rublev thing, you know, and you could probably put this onto Taylor Fritz as well. Both players are probably just a little bit lost. Is probably the best way to to describe them right now. I mean, Rublev coming off the back of, you know, the the default um, and all the kind of drama around that um, just before Indian Wales, and then you know coming back and and maybe trying to get his his head to to move past whatever happened um, uh, in Doha, was it? Um, so. Um, so okay. yeah, I suppose yeah, it's just to, to try and figure out. Rublev loves the clay, though. He, he's yeah. uh, he's a defending champion at Monte Carlo, so um, so yeah, it'll be um, y- you'll be expecting to tr- to try and you know at least uh, claw back some of those points and get to maybe a quarter final, semi final, um, and uh, you know I'm sure he'll have intentions of winning it. Um, the only other place I was going to go to, is there anything else that you wanted to discuss from the ATP week? Because I was going to bring in um, the guys in Portugal um, and get, before we finished up, to get uh, a little bit of insight to day one of Estoril. But, you know... Yeah, I, I very like Clay, uh, actually. Um, you know, brings a little bit of different things. Uh, so I, I like it when it comes. Um, so yeah, I think that maybe we can, you know, say what are we going to be maybe most interested about this, you know, these three tournaments on clay, for example. Um, if I have to just, you know, mention someone, I would like to see, for example, what Berettini does in in Marrakesh if he keeps, you know, trying to to get back to to some form. Uh, he actually got a, a tough first round, so it's it will be very important. I will I will check the draw, um, the draw soon. But yeah, maybe his name can be you know one of those those ones. One of the players can... to watch out for. Yeah, Shevchenko, Shevchenko. Oh, so it okay. will be yeah, it will be kind of kind of interesting in in my opinion. Uh, but I also love Estoril. Uh, it's well, a player, uh, I really like. Yeah, player, a tournament I really like. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a fun one. Um, and we have uh, a couple of fellows, um, yes, yeah. enjoying themselves there. So, we'll be bringing John, um, and find out how day one it's been a bit of a dramatic day. Um, three setters galore, certainly for the two. So, I'll maybe add uh, a stage. Hello, John. Did I catch you a bit by surprise there? He's Can you hear me? Hello. Okay. Yes, mate. Me? How are you doing? Yeah, you did catch me by surprise. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it brief because um, Damien and I have been doing one or two bits and pieces. As you can see, we've got a 12-minute video there uh, that we posted earlier uh, that got interrupted by rain. But um, 
I guess stories of the last 24 hours, which are obviously highlighted in that video, are uh, Davinci Fakina pulling out with a tooth infection. Uh, um, <laughs> it's funny how I'm leading with that. <laughs> That's the big news. news. That's the big news. Um, uh, weather much colder than it was a year ago. Uh, a year ago, it was like 25 plus, and it was t-shirts and, and shorts. And uh, yeah, it's uh, almost winter, like northern Germany or even deeper stark in Poland. Uh, in terms of some of the results, we've just seen Nuno Borges come from six love, two love down to win in three sets, which when you add in the fact that two hours ago, Damien was tipping him to win the title, had me chuckling quite a lot in the newsroom when it was like eight games in a row for Lucas Puy. But um, he's looking a lot. Look, here he is. Here he is. He, I, he can't hear you unless unless I give him a... He's okay. He's, he's actually... um. He's smelling the, the the food right now, and I think he's getting very tempted. He's prowling like a uh, what? What are the prices got... like, John? Are they the prices are they reasonable? Reasonable, yeah, reasonable. You, yeah. You got to say that though because you're there. No, uh, prices are reasonable. That's for sure. For, for it's 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 one of my favourites, if not my favourite uh, event on tour. Which actually brings me to another point, which is that um, they, the powers that be here in Estoril, do remain optimistic that it will stay on the tour next year. Okay. Um, whether it'll stay in this particular slot, whether it might have to move to the week before the French Open, which personally I think is a, a lower down the... I think this is mm. a great spot. The, the first week of the clay court season, you know, you, there's only so many weeks in the season it can go for. I think this is preferable, for example, than being in that, that one week right before the French Open, where most players, with the exception, I remember Djokovic playing in Serbia a couple of years ago, but uh, this is the prep. But anyway, they still remain optimistic it'll stay on the calendar, and, and I hope so too, because, yeah, I love it here. And, and actually, go... I have to add Sorry. that in the week before the, the French Open, next year, there will be an ATP 500. So oh, there yeah, will right, be Hamburg, bigger, yeah. bigger yeah. competition, you know, while this first week it's only 250s, so, you know, uh, there's you know a more leveled competition between the tournaments so yeah i mean basically this is the this is the prime week for a 250 in my opinion i mean any other week a 250 is going to be in the shadow of something yeah. or, or or whatever so yeah this is this is perfect but um we'll see if it gets this spot or it has to go to that week when when hamburg is here you uh, can get all the disappointed players <laughs> you know from miami <laughs> yeah yeah but but actually you know I mean, her catch is here, Feast is here, Fonseca is here. I mean, obviously, Fonseca. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but no, I mean, yeah, it's fine. I wasn't quite sure. I think all three of these clay court tournaments, I heard you talk about Berrettini and Marrakesh, who's there with Vavrinka and a few others. And obviously, you've got um, Houston, isn't it? Is it Houston right now for the for the men? Or, um, yes, in, yes in yeah, Ben Shelton's yeah, there, yeah. They're all kind of, I mean, Shelton's a big draw. He was here last year. I would have liked to see him be, be here again this year, but... You know, Sarundalo's there in North America as well. But they're all fairly equal um, in the absence of Alcaraz, Sinner and Djokovic. They're all fairly equal and, yeah, it is what it is. But, yeah, our Dominic team winning in three sets earlier. But That's what I was going to you know, ask you. So, yeah, just yeah, did, 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 did you guys were there and <clears throat> is it still a bit still, sticky for him? Uh, it's a bit sticky, yeah, and it's been a sticky four years. Uh, Ke uh, Bautista, a good, that was a really good win for him. He looked yeah. solid earlier and maybe... Of the players that have won and lost today, maybe he's the person that can take the most from it. Nuno Borges obviously winning today, but losing the first eight games. Uh, uh, Dominic team still same issues, and uh, and Bautista good. Baut Bautista good can probably take the most from all of those wins. I would suggest. Okay, and before you go, is there any more tennis tonight, or is that it done because of the rain? Is there... there is another match tonight, but there is a very very vicious rumor, Tom. I want to tell you about flying around here in Estoril, which is suggesting that Damien and I are going to leave before the last, but it's only a rumour right now. No, I don't I mean, believe it. Very, I don't it's believe a very it. vicious, it's a very That's an April one. fool. That is an April fool. Exactly, exactly. And there's a lot of other rumours that suggesting that I'm prioritising beer over tennis. It's also <laughs> extremely unfair. No, no, no. There yeah, must be some good today bars here, there. Today here we had 25 degrees and tomorrow I'm going to the, the Challenger in Barletta which is okay. just, you know, it's 20 minutes from here by car. So I, I for sure, in the afternoon, I'm going to to, to, to go there. <laughs> and 
And yeah, fortunately, it's gonna stay good weather because last year actually was horrible. So <laughs> if we have yeah, some luck, it's the opposite here because last year was amazing in Estoril, and this year it's somewhere between not good and, and horrible, depending yeah. on, on the moment. But it is what it is. But there's a lot to look forward to, and um, I'm excited. I do think Damien does have a point in that he was sort of highlighting some of the levels that we've been seeing. And yesterday, for example, it was a pretty slow slog fest at times, uh, some of the tennis. But fingers crossed we get a dry four or five days and, 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 and things pick up. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's still Fonseca is, you know, exciting and, and draw, feast. Yeah. And uh, Dominic team probably wins his next round. He's going to play Gasquet. Gasquet takes advantage of the fact that David Fakino has dropped out. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, lots to look forward to. Yeah, well, uh, you can keep us up to date, John, um, and uh, myself and Mario wish you a, a I'll, I'll disappear and you two can shut shut this or, or finish this stream. Yeah, I'll, no I'll problem. <laughs> so that's John enjoying a beer. Um, Mario, what are you, are you going to enjoy a beer tonight or are you just chilling out? I don't know if tonight I'm going to do that. No, mon no Monday night beers for you, Mario. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, so yeah, I think I'll just uh, going to to have some some rest. Maybe watch nice some one. tennis if that's something going on. Yeah, I'm sure uh, you can. There's always some tennis somewhere in the world, Mario. There's always somewhere somewhere. Um, okay, I mean, thank you very much for accepting me for uh, to stand in for Damien for the week. Um, uh, you never know, I might be back in the next few. Um, but yeah, it's been a good chat. I've enjoyed it um, as always, yeah, Mario. Me too. Um, let's uh, let's talk again soon. But thank you guys for joining us. Um, hit the like button, subscribe, um, and yeah, let's grow this channel more and more. Okay, night night. Bye.